first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, George and uh, my friend Joe Watkins, who is taking a picture of me, um, <laughs> for inviting me to this uh, very important conference and to give uh, the opportunity to introduce uh, indigenous uh, Ainu people in Japan and uh, uh, policies, recent policies uh, relating to them. Um, and the second, uh, I must apologize for my poor English, and I think this is the best way to avoid serious questions after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, as some of you uh, already know, on uh, June 20, uh, oh eight, uh, the Japanese parliament unanimously <laughs> passed a resolution uh, calling for the recognition of the Ainu as an indigenous people of Jap northern Japan. In response to this re uh, resolution, the chief cabinet secretary made a statement outlining the government's intention to further promote its Ainu policy and establish comprehensive measures based on recognition of the Ainu as an indigenous people with a unique language, religion, and culture. However, neither the parliamentary re resolution <coughs> nor the chief cabinet secretary's statement explained the meaning of indigenous people or specified the legal effect that would, would accompany the status. For this reason, the uh, uh, expert panel on iron policy was established under the Chief Cabinet Secretary in August 2008. Uh, this happens to me. And uh, to consider these issues and to establish a comprehensive policy framework. Uh, according to the commonly accepted the dual structure theory on the formation of Japanese population, uh, the first wave of people drifting from uh, Asian continent, like this, um, spread throughout the Japanese archipelago from Hokkaido, from Hokkaido through Okinawa here, prompting the formation of German hunting and gathering culture. Later, the second wave. Um, of people brought with them uh, lifestyles based on rice cultivation and yayoi culture developed. However, this yayoi culture didn't spread beyond uh, Tohoku region here. And uh, in the north and, uh, and Kyushu in the south. And German hunting and gathering culture basically remained in Hokkaido. And uh, here, Okinawa, as a result. In Hokkaido, German culture is thought to have been basically followed by uh, Ainu culture, uh, which is believed to have formed under the influence of Ohotsu culture uh, around here. And, uh, and other northern factors. The Ain culture that developed in this way is quite different from the Japanese culture, I, uh, culture uh, that formed from a yayoi rice cultivating culture in the south of Japan's main island of Honshu. For instance, the Ain language is, uh, to let's see, yeah. Ain language totally different from the Japanese language in terms of both uh, grammar and sentence structure and the way they consider relations between God and people is also unique. Today it's almost impossible to find people who routinely speak the Ain language even in Hokkaido. But uh, according to recent Hokkaido government survey there are at least 24,000 Ainu people in the Hokkaido prefecture. And these numbers, I'm afraid you can't see the number here, but this number uh, shows the population of each uh, district. So um, most of the Ainu people is living around these, these areas and uh, 
somewhere around this. And the uh, major city in Hokkaido is called Sapporo, which is located here. And this morning, uh, George showed you a slide uh, which showed the uh, uh, last year's uh, conference, which was held in Nibutani in Hokkaido. And the city of Ni uh, town of Nib Nibutani is located here. And uh, January this year, I mean last January, uh, the IPN held another conference in this place, which is uh, beside the Lake uh, Akam, it's beautiful Lake Akam. And, uh, and several, several thousand Ainu are also known to live outside Hokkaido uh, in the Tokyo, this is Hokkaido, and maybe around 5,000 or so Ainu people can be found in Tokyo area or maybe Osaka. It is said uh, that um, Ainu people stopped speaking, stopped speaking the Ainu language of their mother tongue and came to have almost the same lifestyle as non Ainu Japanese people, primarily as a result of the government's policy during the Meiji period or late 19th century. Back then, Russia and Western powers sent warships and other vessels to areas near Hokkaido and Creole Islands to put pressure on Japan. In this international in, uh, environment, the Japanese government focused on establishing Hokkaido as its own territory by introducing the Japanese system there and by Japanizing the area's indigenous Ainu people. A modern land ownership system was introduced primarily to allow the establishment of a tax system and this limited the number of areas where the Ainu could engage in hunting, <coughs> gathering, and fishing. As the land reclamation progressed, hunting and fishing became banned throughout Hokkaido, which forced the Ainu into dire poverty. Restrictions and prohibitions relating to various aspects of their unique culture and customs, coupled with fewer opportunities to speak the I the Ainu language hastened the, the assimilation of the Ainu and the culture was pushed to the verge of extinction. However, the fact that they speak a different language and look different doesn't mean that they also shed their ethnic Ainu identi identity when they largely lost the culture they inherited from their ancestors. We can say that ethnic identity is the beating heart of the eth an ethnic group. However, this is no denying that the, un the undermining of their language and other aspects of their unique ethnic culture, as well as the tangible and intangible uh, discrimination seen today, are making it difficult for the Ainu to maintain even their ethnic identity. We can see clearly from the history of Hokkaido's uh, development that the Ainu lost the previous environment that allowed them to maintain the ethnic identity. That is, they lost the surroundings in which they could speak the Ainu language and embrace Ainu uh, culture because of Japanese government policy. With this being the case, I believe the government has an obligation to restore the environment in which the Ainu can enjoy their culture and awareness of their Ainu heritage, if they wish to do so. And this was the gist of the report submitted to the Chief Cabinet Secretary by the expert panel on Ainu policy in July 2009. It stated that the government has a strong responsibility to consider the cultural revival of the Ainu as a Japanese indigenous people based on the fact that the nation's modernization policy dealt a serious blow to Ainu culture. When we think of culture, things like language, dance, uh, crafts, and so forth spring to mind. But culture has a broader meaning that relates to all aspects of human life and it should be noted that the report re refers to culture in this wider sense. The report also asserts that in addition to reviving traditional Ainu culture, 
there is also a need to create a new iron culture with the revived culture at its core. That is, it also points out the need to develop an environment where both traditional culture and new culture can be created for future prosperity. To revive and develop iron culture in its broad sense and enable iron people to embrace their ethnic identity, a range of policy measures are about to be implemented including moves to create a symbolic space for ethnic harmony uh, in a beautiful natural environment, complete with facilities including cultural center and museum, and establishments for inter-ethnic exchange. The policy measures also include efforts to promote iron research aspects of Ain culture such as the Ain language and the use of land and other resources by the Ainu and Ain businesses uh, of which intellectual property issues are very important factors as well as in improving life standard, enhancing educational levels and promoting uh, public awareness. Uh, ethnic consciousness um, is developed in relation to the presence of external environments. So we can say uh, that Ainu ethnic identity is passed on only when its language, tra traditional folk tales, lifestyles, and other unique aspects are also passed on, <coughs> and related environments are Im improved. For this reason, the government must develop an environment that lets the Ainu pass on their language and lifestyles so that they can embrace their ethnic identity. It's difficult to positively choose, positively choose ethnic identity in a society where discrimination exists. So the government should also eliminate discrimination against the Ainu people. Uh, in <coughs> December 2010, the new Ainu policy promotion panel was established as a permanent deliber deliberative bo body headed by the Chief Cabinet Secretary. This was a uh, uh, former Prime Minister of Japan and this is uh, uh, Executive Director of the Ainu Association of, of Hokkaido. So it's now working hard to build the policy measures recommended by the expert panel. Hopes are high that these measures will encourage more Ainu people to proudly choose the Ainu identity and result in the enhanced public awareness of Ainu, Ainu matters. And uh, lastly, there are no well-documented public records that objectively trace the lineage of Ainu individuals, nor do the Ainu have an organization to represent them legitimately. Uh, for this reason, it's difficult to readily implement policy measures like grants that target individual Ainus. Against this background, the Japanese government's strategy to, for promoting Ain policy is twofold. At the first step, it will strive to promote Ain culture in the broad sense to create a society where Ainu people can embrace their ethnic identity. And once this is achieved to a certain extent, the second step of exploring the feasibility of policy measures targeting individuals will be considered. So I think it's time and uh, my presentation is uh, for now, that's it. So.